Hi guys, welcome to the channel. This is Jerry, and this is the all new 2023 Nissan X Trail for New Zealand market. We are right hand drive on this vehicle. Um, so, today I will show you all the functions and features on this digital dash, which is available on the new Nissan X Trail for the medium to high spec, and also all the steering controls on left and right plus the steering controls behind the steering wheel um, so yeah there will be a quite long video I'll leave all the timestamps down below and so you can get through all the features everything if you're looking to purchase any Nissan vehicles in New Zealand make sure you contact us at Abit Bukowi we are the authorized dealer for Nissan, Volkswagen, MG and Kia and if you're looking for more other videos make sure you subscribe and like that will be really helpful for the small channel to grow um, so yeah and first thing let's show you the indicator information on the right hand side so indicator is very easy go up or down to the right or left left or right sorry and or just a small touch give you three different beeps just like that that's pretty simple and um, if you want to switch on the headlight manually you can switch forward or backwards and that allows you to switch the parking light and also the headlights for night otherwise just leave on auto it'll switch on switch off for you automatically uh, once your headlight is on or automatic on you can also engage the fog lights let's say that way so you can see fog lights switch on and fog lights light came on just over there switch it back make sure this arrow this light goes to no point that means the head and the fog light is off just like that and um, high beam uh, basically push forward or you can use the auto high beam available on this one just as long as your headlight is on again just push this side you can see the headlight is available uh, so you have to make sure you press the auto headlight before you engage the high beam assist um, for that information otherwise you can switch the um, the manual high beam just push forward switch on manual high beam or push pull it back to the flashlight and then on the left we have the auto ring sensing wiper so to change the different positions or gears you just use the whole lever to go up and down so at the moment we are at off position we go up it doesn't click it's only gonna swipe once that's it and then push it down once one position it will be an automatic as you can see on the dashboard that means the front wiper is now automatic then if you keep pulling down you can do low or high speed at low or high speed it's not automatic anymore by the way and then uh, for the windscreen wiper once you are on auto you can also switch this forward or backwards to change the sensitivity as you can see so forward means maximum sensitivity uh, downwards means lowest sensitivity and plus you get a small switch on the side that allows you to use the rear wiper to switch forward or backwards obviously low or high speed which if you like and then if you do want to watch the front windscreen just push uh, pull this against the steering just like that you'll swipe uh, watch the front windscreen and then push this forward and hold to watch the rear windscreen so that's pretty easy and you can push or pull as long as you like to use the um, windscreen washer basically so that's that and next part um, we'll quickly show you the digital dash so there's a lot of information to talk about uh, so first thing we we'll go through these small buttons on the left and right so first and um, that's volume control up and down that's track control for the music for the radio and then this is the menu button for that particular menu it's a quick adjustment menu which we'll show you later and then left and right for your adjustments on the digital dash up and down this is scroll up and down uh, to control the different display and push down in the center is to oh, go into OK menu or to select whichever you like. Then on behind the steering we have left which is minus, right is plus for your gear change if you're driving the pure petrol version obviously. And then on the right we have all the information. So this is your safety functions so if you tap the safety function or your safety function is on it'll show you what the functions are available everything and then on the right you can see your um, adaptive cruise control information once you switch on the adaptive cruise control you can go forward um, which is oh, sorry which you can go downwards which is your set obviously you cannot set right now because we're not driving once you set a particular case you can go up or down to change your set speed you can push push down for cancel uh, or you can while you canceled you can also push up to resume or push down to set again so that's how to do, do the adaptive cruise control and then you get this button that allows you to change the distance between you and the front vehicle so the vehicle will keep a safe distance for you and um, yeah 
<clears throat> so the cruise control is only available to set or to perform once you're over 30 kilometers per hour by the way if your vehicle eventually slow down to less than 30 k's you automatically disengage and we have warning screen on the dashboard basically another feature you can use there's a cool feature called speed limiter so you can in press this button you can push down or up you can see we have set the vehicle speed limiter to 32 kilometers that means the vehicle you can drive the vehicle by pushing the brake or accelerator but the vehicle will not allow you to engage the um, will, will not allow you to go over 32 kilometers per hour on the speed so that helps you to slow you down or not going through uh, going through the, <coughs> the speed uh, limit basically and once you press this to de disengage so no light means the function is off just like that and then this is the answer phone answer button or hang up button we answer the or hang up the phone call this is the voice command button and simply tap this you can say guide me to somewhere somewhere then on your navigation it will show up the navigation it will search the address for you that's the voice command so that's all the physical buttons around the dashboard on the right we do also have a couple of features this first one is your heads up display available on the higher spec in New Zealand simply tap that heads up display is gone tap it again heads up display is back and um, then that's your steering assist so simply tap that your steering assist is off tap that again your steering control is on again but it's only available when your adaptive cruise control is on by the way so that's your steering assist and this is for the boot release push and hold you open the boot this is the brightness adjustment and simply tap plus or minus you can adjust the brightness for the dashboard so those are the features that's available on this particular train then in some other markets you may get different buttons here and there all the things just a standard thing Next, we'll dive into the digital dash that will have a lot of information to display. So first thing, as we all know, you can go left and right to change whatever you like in this center screen. And uh, you do have two designs, which I'll show you. And um, on the left, on the right, that's pretty much fixed the screen. Uh, you can't choose anything that will always permanently show your display for the speedo, show your fuel consumption, show your water temperature, show your um, the kilometers, which is your range, which is sorry, which is your odometer, show your range, roughly this 600 k's to go, but this will fluctuate based on the thing, uh, temperature, and also the time on the, on the side. Um, two design to choose. So now you have the quick adjustment menu. So this is the quick menu we can tap. And then we have the shortcut menu that allows us to change the emergency lens. Uh, so you can click OK or on and off, which don't worry about that. I'll show you later. Uh, next one is the change display view. So you get two different designs you can change. So first one is this. Second one is this. So basically, a sort of zoom in in the center display and zoom out on the side display. It still shows you all the same information. It's just a different graphic design. If you don't want it, just press this change back to the display view just like that so this is the traditional design uh, whichever you want to call it basically and next one we have the audio source we can change different fm radio or um, you know other things uh, your bluetooth everything if you want to change those things otherwise click left is back so make sure we get back to the screen driver assistance you can quickly change these things um, about land about blind spot all that things but i'll dive into that in in the main display and last one is the personal display so you can just tap that that allows you to actually personalize this function over here on the left at the moment our position is on our sort the indications on gear selection so it will disappear after a while so make sure you keep swiping and go personal view so we can do for example fuel consumption you can see the fuel consumption display on the left and uh, this vehicle is high fuel consumption because it's just down PDI uh, time to destination you can select that so that means when your navigation is on it will, it will show you in the rough information on the side and um, then otherwise you can do blank so it doesn't show anything on the left personally I prefer the um, gear position but then again you can choose whatever you like just to favorite to your whatever the favorites you have so that's your quick display menu over there um, other than that we'll go through one by one on from the down menu so let's go from the home first in the home we have two screens first screen is your in navigation or sort of um, your campus information on the top and your music at the bottom in this particular screen you can also click ok that allows you to change the music source which is what we can do in this 
this quick menu anyway, but you can do here just like that. You can do AM, FM, DAB. If your Bluetooth is connected, you can show DA, it will show Bluetooth as well if you like. And then we can swipe down so you can see the dots on the right. That means you do have a secondary menu you can choose. Just swipe it down. This is the blank menu, so it doesn't show anything at all. So this is on the first home screen. Next one, we have the consumption screen for your drive computer. So you can go up and down again. So that's your menu reset one or menu reset two, which if you like. If you do want to reset it, just push down this and click push down and hold to reset the tripodometer if you wish. Then click right again. That's your four wheel drive tox split. Obviously this vehicle is four wheel drive. So it does have the information. So show your tox split when you're driving on off road, on road, whatever you like. And then next one, we have the tire pressure monitoring system. So the vehicle will tell you what your tire pressure is like in the vehicle on four tires. Uh, you can, um, once you start driving, once the vehicle gets some temperature on the tires, it will be, be able to display whether it's 35 PSI or whatever in the display. Once it's displayed, you'll be able to know your tire pressure is like. If you want the tire pressure is too low, it's going to give you a warning on the dashboard. It's pretty simple. And you can also go into the OK to do settings. Just press OK. That allows us to see the target at the front and target at the back. What that target means, you can reset whatever you like to do 36, 35, whatever, by pressing OK. That means if the target is mid, if your, if your tire pressure is around 35, from 34 to 36, let's assume, it'll be okay. It's not gonna give you warning. It's not gonna give you indication or anything like that. Because, but if the tire pressure is too low, down to 30 or down to 25, it's gonna give you warning on the dashboard. But if you don't want the 35 PSI to be target, you can change that whenever you like. That means you get less tire pressure, so it's not gonna give you warning. This is only up to you. To find your tire pressure warning, it's on the driver door side. Which in New Zealand is looking look like this, but again, you can change whatever you like on the tire pressure. It's okay to go a little bit high unless you go off-roading sort of thing. So that's your target for now. And you can change it whenever you like, that's totally fine. And once you change it, you can do the tire pressure unit. In case you don't want PSI, you can do bar or KPA, whichever, whichever you like. The last one, you can recalibrate if you wish. Just press calibrate and press yes to confirm if you wish. So otherwise, you'll be okay. Next one, we have the navigation information. So that allows us to see a lot of information on the navigation. Once you start driving, it does give you indication of, for example, uh, navigation guidance, all the things on the top. So just the campus information. And then we have the FM, which is your music source, music player. You can go up or down, uh, or you can click source. That allows you to change to a different radio um, sort of source, basically. Or press FM, just like that. So that's how to, that, that works. Um, yeah. And then we are going to write, that's your assistant systems. So the moment nothing uh, nothing's showing over here in the middle one, because the middle one, we haven't done the depth cruise or anything like that. But once you switch anything on, it will basically give you indication and everything like that. And then we can go forward. We can see what these things are like. So press OK again. That allows you to change all the land, change the blind spot, change the emergency brake, which I will go into deep on the next menu, the setting menu for you to explain what they in, um, include. But you can see the forward is on, the blind spot is on, but the land is off. So that means that they are not doing anything on the land uh, assistance, but all these functions are working basically. That's how the display is like. This is your deputy grooves, so pick up the front vehicle. And then this is the tra traffic sign recognition. So basically, you always have a permanent display as soon as you switch this on. So show your adaptive, uh, sorry, show your speed sign recognition information when you go through different areas. The last one is the big part. That's your setting menu. So going to the setting menu, the first one is your electric electronic stability control. Uh, so basically, at the moment, the function is on. But if you switch it off, it's going to give you all the warning on the on the right, on the left, telling you that your function is switched off. So we want to switch it back on. You may want to use this while you go off road, but you don't want to use this when you could drive on in the city area for sure. Next one, driving assistance. This is a big part. So we have the steering assist at the moment that's on, or you can switch it off, that's up to you. So the steering assist can only be engaged when the adaptive cruise control is on, basically. So at the moment, if you're driving in the sort of standard minor with, with your brake and acceleration, the vehicle will not engage the steering assist. But once you start the adaptive cruise control, the function will be available, just like that. And then we have, sorry, 
just got distracted and we have the LAN assistance. So the first thing is warning. You can engage or disengage. The warning means um, once, you st once you start driving over 60 kilometers per hour in using the vehicle and the vehicle will see the LAN marking on the left or on the right or on both. And then if your vehicle goes out of your lanes on left or right and the car will give you beeping sound to give you warning basically. Uh, so that's just a simple warning. You can engage the second one called intervention. So intervention works if you go over your line marking uh, not only give you the warning sound uh, also the vehicle apply your brake just by gently to try to uh, warn you to try to sort of give you a shock and um, to, to warn you you are out of your line marking so that's really up to you honestly uh, next one emergency lens that means your blind spot will pick up the landmark uh, the and the thing on the side then the vehicle give you a warning before you go over your line marking before you crash into something someone or anything like that the sensitivity can be changed from normal to strong to mild that's up to you and vibration level can be middle or high or low on your steering vibration it does vibrate for you that's up to you and then next one blind spot that's obviously on that means you, your vehicle will pick up the blind spot information when the vehicle is traveling behind you, the triangle small light will, will light up if, um, if someone is traveling behind you. And then uh, the emergency braking before you crash into something or someone in front of you or when you're in reverse. As long as you have all the seatbelts on, the vehicle will give you warning sound. If you like, are likely to crash into something or some objective, then eventually give you a full emergency stop if necessary or full stop or a very heavy brake to, to keep you in the right distance be, between you and the front vehicle so that's available at the front and at the back as well if you don't want it you can disengage either one of them uh, traffic sign recognition obviously that's switched on if you don't want it switch it off so no light on the dash but personally i really like this feature and then when your speed goes over the speed limit it does give you a small flash um, to tell you you're over the speed limit as well the speed limit link is the same thing so basically you give you a warning on the dashboard if you're over the speed limit sort of thing and the speed link offsite so what that means is if the speed information picks up 60 on the road and then you are driving 60 it's going to give you a warning at 60 or 61 as long as you go over that uh, go over that speed limit offsite you can also do up or down Whichever you like, that means if I do plus one, the vehicle will only give me warning once you on once I reach um how do you say 61. Otherwise you can do zero case. It's up to you as well. Some people may prefer plus five or plus ten, depends on your area. Some local, you know, um like um rules does have some allowance. This is honestly up to you, so that was quite helpful. And next one we have the parking eight. So that's your parking sensors basically. That means the parking sensor will pick up the moving objective if you don't want it you cancel it you can see the display that means the parking sensor will display the lines once your camera is on just like that so you, you, if you get anything, anything in front of it so the parking sensor will pick up the line marking and everything and then we have the uh, front sensor and rear sensor yeah so on by the way and uh, distance you can start you can allow the parking sensor to disengage or re um, di uh, sort of engage or disengage um, at medium or far or close level and volume you can change the volume to low or high whichever you like so the packing 8 is pretty simple and next one is the feature called the rear cross traffic alert so that means when you reverse out the car park and someone's crossing behind you the vehicle give you a warning on your wing mirror basically give you flash and uh, sort of thing if you don't want it you can disengage which have up to you uh, it's, um, it doesn't give you a full stop um, but it'll give you a warning in case you're reversing too fast um, next one we have the driving alert, uh, driving atten driver attention alert. So if you are not paying attention on the road, uh, or you let your steering go, all that things, and the vehicle steering give you vibration, and the vehicle give you warning, all that things information. And we also have time alert. So in case you're driving a long, very long time, you can reset the time alert, and then or you can set the time alert so you don't drive over two hours in one trip or a single trip or anything like that. And you do have also have last one, low temperature alert. May not get that serious in New Zealand, but if it's extremely cold, give you a warning on your low temperature. So that's the driving assistance. Um, next one, we have the personal display. So that allows you to change everything on the left. So we've already done that. So you can change whatever you like in terms of all these things to, uh, to that thing. Personally, I've, my favorite is just to 
easy key position. Uh, heads up display, you can change the brightness, you can change the height, you can change the rotation, which go left and right, tilt. You can also change the content selection. It will, con uh, will come with the navigation, the driving aids, which is your adaptive cruise control information, land departure information, traffic signs, it's display over there. It also says audio, so you can when you change audio stations, everything it does display. A phone call again when you change when someone calls in, it will display on the um, the heads up display. That's up to you, whichever you like. You can do those things for you. So yeah, you can change the heads up display. Eco setting, so the vehicle does come with uh, eco, so the driving information, all that things. You can change the eco drive mode on cruise control, on climate control as well. And that means when you are on eco drive mode, which is sim simply select to eco, um, your your aircon and your cruise control are going to be eco by uh, by default basically you're gonna automatically change the default if you don't want that go to default when you change to eco make sure you disable that and eco info settings you can change the eco in indication once you start driving the eco indication will light up on the side everything a eco driver report or report your uh, fuel consumption and all that things you can see your history as well obviously this vehicle has just been pre delivering inspection so it's not been real, really driving on the road so it does display a very different figure from what you can you should be able to achieve uh, tire eco advice you can you can give the advice on the tires in case anything goes wrong next one the tire pressure we've already done that in the previous episode so just basically reset the psi and all that things if you wish and clock we can change the clock settings at the moment display on or off whichever you like auto mode uh, auto mode basically manually or based on gps select your time so that's very handy and if it's not correct, just disengage the auto hold. You can do menu or you can do time zone, which if you like. Uh, clock format, 12 hours or 24 hours with PM or AM, which if you like. So it's pretty simple. Vehicle settings, we have the power back door. So in case you don't like the power tailgate, you can disengage this. Just by disengage, you can manually use the power tailgate. Otherwise, just engage it. You can just enjoy the electronic, electric, electronic control. Lighting, uh, we do have welcome light. So when you when you unlock the vehicle, the headlights switch on, so you can see the headlight. Uh, you can see the um, sort of, um, the uh, surrounding areas if you wish. Uh, you also have auto room room lights. So basically, automatic switch on the interior ambient lights if for you at, as you wish. Um, we also have mood lighting, uh, so you can change the brightness, everything. Uh, you won't be able to change the color, but you can change the brightness on the dashboard if you wish. So that will help, help you with the you know, inf uh, uh, ambient lighting in the interior. Uh, we also have locking, so central locking. You can do the I key door lock. That means you do have the I smart lock when you press the button on the door, it automatically locks. Uh, you can do selective unlock. Uh, so that means when you unlock the driver door, only the driver door will be unlocked. Uh, so the other door will remain locked until you either press unlock button on the door, uh, on the uh, on the central locking, or you either double tap the key on the key key fob. Uh, but otherwise, if you disengage that, all the central locking will be engaged or uh, be uh, disengaged when you unlock the door. Wipers, you can do the speed dependent. So based on your speed, your speed goes up, your automatic wiper will go up a little bit on the speed as well. Uh, auto wiper, that's obviously on. Reverse link, that means if, you, if your wiper is on automatic, when you reverse, your rear wiper will wipe uh, for a few times before you go, go into, when, once you go into reverse, so you can see a clear view from your rear um, to the windscreen. And next one, we have the driving position. So we engage that. You can see the exit seat slide. That means when you jump, when you switch off the vehicle, when you open the driver door, your, your seat automatically go backwards. So give you a slightly better sort of jumping out position. And when you come inside the vehicle, when you switch on the vehicle, the seat automatically goes back to its position. So that's quite handy with the driving position. Uh, rear door alert, in case the rear door was left open um, or anything like that, it does switch on and or it does have horn or alert, whichever you like, all that things, otherwise it stays off. Uh, wind mirror forward at, at unlock, uh, automatic lock uh, or automatic forward, all that things. If you don't like it, you can automatically forward off, so it's not going to automatically forward if you don't like it. Or you can engage at ignition. That means when you switch on the vehicle, the wind will automatically unfold. Or at unlock position, that means when you unlock the vehicle, automatically will 
bring the vehicle information so that's great uh, so bring the um, wind mirror so that's quite and easy next one maintenance so you can see the service air filter all that things and uh, information so in New Zealand that's every 15,000 kilometers for the service other things are dif 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 different um, but you can see the indication on that when you before you need a service it'll give you a reminder on the dashboard next uh, part we have the display settings so going to the display we have the con content selection uh, you can see how what you like basically with these information or things if you don't want it you can select ok or deselect ok so you can see it's not selected that means in the home screen where we go through all the things you don't have that information anymore so this is up to you uh, when all the lights here are white that means it's all selected so we can have all the information in the display Route guidance, you can see the alerts or no alerts, which if you like. Uh, auto cruise display, so it means when you switch on the cruise control, this will show up the cruise control directly. Um, when you switch on, switch off, basically. Welcome effect, you can see the animation when you switch on the vehicle. Um, you can disengage it if you don't like it. Uh, operation guidance, um, you can see the lights, you can see the wipers. Basically, when you do anything for the vehicle indication, for the light or for the wipers, it will pop up a notification on the dashboard. So that's quite handy. I would want all those things for me. Units and language, you can change the units for your fuel, for your distance, for your kilometers or miles, for your temperature, for your language from English or from to anything. That's up to you. You can also do a factory reset with all these, these um, settings that we did. So that's up to you. And yeah, I think that's all the features about this. Uh, sorry, my camera does switch on, switch off because it's been really hot um, today in, in New Zealand. Um, I do apologize if the video quality or voice quality is not so good. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you found this helpful. Please subscribe and like if, you, um, if, you're, if you're interested in any other videos in the future. Um, and that will be supporting the, supporting the small channel as well. And um, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.